Hi, this is Peggy van der Plage, and my guest today is Puna Paramasivan. I said it, Puna. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today. How are you doing? Very good, Peggy. How are you? Very, very good. So, so you have a co-founder and the CTO of a very, very interesting company called Evonesis. Um, and that's one of my uh, investment recommendations. You're raising funds right now on uh, WeFounder. Could you tell, tell us more about, about your company? Sure, definitely. So Evonesis is you know, founded six, seven years back by me and my other friends. So we have been in working in that low-code platforms for the last 20 years. So we know the importance of it, how quickly we can build the products and projects. Mm -hmm. So we thought like, you know, seven years back, we wanted to start this company and then help mid-size enterprises and large enterprises uh, build their transformations pretty quick. That was a primary motive for us. That's where we started. And we deal only with low-code platforms. So low-code platforms, just to give a quick introduction, whenever you want to build something, let's say you want to build Facebook or Facebook sort of product, it takes a lot of code. So yes, just one is. statistics is Facebook took like six to millions of code, lines of code. That's Facebook. It's Today, you just open a browser, you, you log into Facebook, but a lot of code running behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So to build anything like this, if you want to build a loan platform or if you want to do... Um, HR transformation project, anything like that, it's going to be taking a lot of time because you have to code from start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Low code platforms completely take this away. And that's the advantage of low code. You can do it very quickly. You can just drag and drop uh, mm -hmm. your, your UI, user interface, and the logic. Everything is pretty fast. The, the name it says, says that low code. Yeah. You're kind of like doing a very less number of code and make your project very fast. So that's the advantage of low code platforms. And that's what we specialize. And our, our, our idea is all about the digital transformation using low code. Okay. And so I was VP innovation in a large bank. So I know all digital transformation is a, is, is a challenge for small organization, medium, large organization. Do you have a sweet spot? Do you have an industry uh, that you mm -hmm. love and that you're really uh, going deep? I need to say that last year, your revenue were close to 15 million. So... Yeah. You're a, a, a very, very uh, advanced and solid uh, company. Uh, usually we see companies a bit earlier stage on the platform. So, so who are your clients and, and why do they mm -hmm. work with you? Yeah, great question. So first we started with banking because, you know, as you know, most of the innovation, it starts from banking. Um, if you take blockchain, a lot of innovative things going on in the banking side. Mm -hmm. So we started with bank and very large banks, you know, the top oh. 10 banks of the US, most of them are our customers. Oh, okay. So that's how we started in 2015. And then obviously this is workflow, right? So everybody have the same problem. Yeah. They want to have a build a workflow, a digital transformation. Everybody has it, whether you talk to a bank yeah. or insurance company, everybody has the same problem. But because, you know, we are very you know, good in the tool, we are very good in the product, the low-code products. So we have a partnership with Pega Systems. Oh. And we have a partnership with Mendix. They're all top low-code platforms. If you yeah. go to Gartner, you can see them. Yeah. We, we are very, you know, we have a lot of expertise on the, those tools. So that's what, you know, you know, people start talking to us. It's not just banks, uh, insurance, healthcare, government, nonprofits, everybody start coming to us. And then they want to have the digital transformation journey. I sit with them. I, I kind of like draw the roadmap for them for the next two to three years, mm -hmm. what they need to do. So they kind of like our approach. So if you, the way I, I would say the sweet spot is not about the industry, but how we are positioned. So if yeah. you take the large uh, software services companies, they have thousands of things to do. They don't just focus on digital transformation. They don't just focus on low code. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if you take this very small software service providers, they're all looking at, you know, placing their people. It's more of a staff augment augmentation. Yeah. Yeah. So we are not, we are not there or we are not here. We are in a spot where we have like, you know, all our people are experts. Like, you know, they're all senior system architects, certified senior system architects. And they all focus on one thing, you know, how to transform our clients' needs, mm -hmm. how to evolve. So our, our motive is evolution by innovation. So we innovate and then evolve. 
So that, that's what we specialize on. I like, I like that. That's a very nice, uh, very nice uh, way of, of framing it. So you've seen 200% revenue growth year over year. Mm -hmm. So obviously a great success. Uh, from my perspective, the market, the time seems infinite because there is so many companies that needs mm -hmm. uh, that needs help. Um, what is your go-to market? Or do you? I understand that you might have a lot of inbounds. But mm -hmm. how do you how do you attract this company so uh, your next revenue growth is like five hundred percent? Yeah, I mean we we do um, we have a very strong sales and marketing team, and we go for all the trade shows. So when you go to the trade shows, you know our existing customers, new prospects, they all talk to each other. They see the value of avances, and then that's one way of getting clients. Um, and then we have a very strong marketing team. And a sales team who who does you know reach out to customers. We have a pretty good outbound last year and this year. We started reaching out to people who are in need of digital transformation projects, mm -hmm. um, you know, by email campaigns and then telemarketing calls. Okay. Those are the those are the ways we do things today. And pred predominantly, I would say like trade show is a good success for us. Trade show is a great thing. Okay, I can I, I heard that in the past with COVID, it has been such a eat and miss. At least in Canada, everything was closed for so mm -hmm. long. Um, so you were mentioning, uh, so you have 400 employees uh, who are experts, always hiring for you because I assume you, you need to increase your staff mm -hmm. in proportion with the number of uh, mandates you win. So how, how do you manage that? True. I mean, like, you know, one of the strong challenge today is you, you all heard about the great resignation going around. But then I would say, you know, you know fingers crossed, I didn't have any people left. Uh, from our organization in the US. I mean, you have you have resignations in other places where there are like, you know, hundreds of developers in Asia, mm -hmm. but in the US, we didn't have anyone uh, leaving us. Uh, and, and it's a very special, area, you know, it's a very special skill. So it's kind of hard to recruit. So we do two things. One is, you know, we train people, we get the experts, we train them, number one. And number two is, you know, we are in the market for like, you know what, we are in the industry for like 20 years. So we have a lot of friends, a lot of network. Yes. Yes. They join us. That's a pr primary source of our people. Okay, referral. Okay, which is uh, obviously the best people on top of that comes through yes. referral. So A players mm -hmm. want to play with A players. So that's that's very good. Um, so usually in professional services, uh, we don't see so much recurring revenue. We see more reoccurring revenue simply because it's mm -hmm. a different way of, um, of framing. Um, I, I really love professional services. I think even if it's not recurring, the reoccurring mm -hmm. is usually a high percentage. And I think your percentage is close to 100% in, uh, in terms of your revenue with your clients. Am I correct? That is right. Yes. Yes. Last two to three years, uh, again, same thing. We have been our customers have been having recurring businesses, reoccurring businesses, a uh, new pro set of projects. And we're also, you know, although we are like a services company, we are also looking at a SaaS offering also. So we, we have our own product. We built a HR transformation product, project product. It's called People HCM. And that's, you know, if you want to call, like I'll give a simple example. If you want to, if you're sick and you just want to wake up and say, hey, Alexa, I'm taking off today that applies the time off for you. So that's the kind of system we built. So we don't have to go to login and then say, I'm taking off yeah, those yeah. kind of things. It's a very omni-channel, powerful HCM oh. system. So it's a SaaS application we developed and there are a lot of uh, prospects along the way. So we will be having recurring revenue from a SaaS product also. Got you. And are you planning to develop additional products uh, yes. parallel to the HR? Okay. Oh, that's great. That's right. I, didn't, yeah. I didn't realize that you had um, the recurring product. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult usually for service company to develop product because they're so hook on the cash, you know? Yeah. Product, you really need to allocate your right. revenue, your income to fund. Mm -hmm your product. So I guess the raise is going to finance some of this work as well then. It does too. Yeah. It helps uh, a little bit. Yes. But you know, in the, the way we did is like last three, four years, the first three, four years, we, we did not develop products, but we built accelerators. So what that means is something which makes your project building faster, even okay. more faster. So we built them. And then at some point we thought, okay, you know, 
that's one of the reason you you know you see clients coming back but then we looked at the saas market also because we have people right so if you say 400 developers not all 400 developers will be in project there are times they will come into what we call as a bench they don't yes. work for a specific client and that time they start working on this products ah, so we are great yeah. okay that makes sense yes. okay and we and the good thing is like you know they're all industry experts so some of them focus on insurance some of them focus on manufacturing so those those are the other next set of saas products coming up mm-hmm. but right now we have the hcm as one of our saas product okay that's very exciting and you know in in addition of so you mentioned the products you're creating you're mentioning the accelerant that you have mm-hmm. but i see in terms of ip as well all the processes the templates the way you actually frame um uh, projects and and that usually people underestimate that in the service industry we think that it's not ip but it is actually ip so you have a lot a lot of different type of ip in the company that is right people value that actually you know if our clients like us because of that one reason yeah uh, you know if you if you want to build a, so one of the thing is like if you if you send money from say canada to us obviously it's it's going to involve swift and messaging back and forth it's not like a email right they send swift messages so most of the times when you look at wholesale uh, banking it's going to be a lot of millions of dollars so you know there is there are products but then you when you build accelerators it makes your life even more easier there is one of the australian bank we built a project where we were able to dip, do the payment investigation project in 3 to 6 months so that's like huge because you know it takes regularly even with the low code platforms it takes more than a year exactly But because of our accelerators it, it it went so fast so all the prospects and clients love us because of the accelerators yeah. well and what i meant with people don't really it's more investors who don't necessarily understand that if you're a oh, service gotcha. firm mm-hmm. you have tons of ip you know usually it's very binary your product mm-hmm. company or your service company yes. but even yes. service company have yeah. very valuable ip and to your point if you're able to deliver a project in half of the time and obviously mm-hmm. uh reasonable costs you know uh, because that you know that all come together well suddenly you're much more valuable and much more True. likely to be seeing mm-hmm. recurring revenue Are we yeah. occurring revenue so <laughs> I really I really like that. Um in terms of time we discussed obviously so it's a large time simply because digital transformation touches everything. I understand you mentioned Australia you mentioned the US you're working with pretty much every uh, every countries and every industry uh, in in the world. No not not that much of every everywhere in the world but I would say like you know 80% of the revenue comes from the US. and okay. you know 20% from europe and australia so we are in four different continents okay. uh primarily from you know primarily i would say netherlands is one of the in the europe netherlands is huge for us okay yeah and in the us i would say like you know us is a predominant factor for us and wow. we also have a you know canada presence but it's very small yeah yeah but i mean that's your presence today your mm-hmm. presence tomorrow basically the world could be your oyster uh true 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 there is no yeah. barrier for you to no. help yeah i mean across definitely the- definitely you know there is you know a lot of expansion for us you know some of the things we had to slow down uh there are opportunities uh in the middle east yeah a lot of opportunities in the europe and united kingdom so it's it's all coming up i would say like you know next two to three years you know we'll have more and more presence I can I can see that. Um anything that I didn't mention that you would like to share with the investors who are watching this video and and why uh they should mm-hmm. invest. I invested so I'm already I'm already sold but uh mm-hmm. maybe some people are still uh, looking into that any any sure. last thoughts. Yeah, definitely. I just want to give a high level idea like you know most of the times people think a very early level entry level SaaS company goes for crowdfunding. we are kind of breaking that bias here we are we are a very successful services company yeah. we are getting into crowdfunding because we want our friends family and extended circle to be benefited first so that's the reason they never had any angel investment done in the past so they're all using this platform we funder to get the funds here and then obviously 
the way we are looking, the trajectory looks very strong for us. We are going to have a Reg D uh, accredited investor round next, and then followed by a Reg A, and then we are planning to go live into IPO in aggressively, I would say like into the next two to three years, we would be thinking of either IPO or DPO, and we need more investors for that. And that's one big reason for us oh, to start here with yes. crowdfunding. Yes, yes, yes. I yeah. hear that very often. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. uh, that's a smart move. And I like the fact that you're already thinking down the line, yes. aligning, aligning all your ducks. So that's, that makes a lot of sense. That's very exciting. And, and, you know, right now we are very kind of like, you know, very, our valuation is very, very less. We didn't do a, we are evaluated more, but then we want to get more investors. So we, we want to give a lot of uh, discounts for the early investors. I'm very, very positive. This is the right time for you to invest in nuances and then get the rewards in the next two, three years. That's wonderful. Well, you know, thank you so, so much for taking the time, giving more context, you know, like uh, I'm even mm -hmm. more excited. I'm wondering if I'm not going to increase my investment, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we just talked but Thank you so, uh -huh. so much for your time and really wishing you a lot, a lot of luck with, uh, with your company. Thank you so much, Peggy. Thank you.